As with most veterinarians, I was taught during veterinary schools that dogs that were not intended for breeding should be spayed or neutered to help prevent and or correct the problem of overpopulation of dogs. Spaying or castrating dogs were relatively simple surgical procedures with few complications. And in fact, it's one of the surgical techniques that almost all veterinary students perform while in school. Now, for a couple of decades after veterinary school, I continued to advocate that all dogs not planned for breeding should have their gonads removed. But then I had an experience that made me rethink my long held belief. A member of the Vigla Club of America contacted me with the results of a retrospective study that they had conducted. As with many breed clubs, the Vigla Club had sent out a survey to Vigla owners to learn about what health conditions they had experienced in their dogs so the Vigla Club would know where to direct their research funds. Their initial results showed that the dogs that were spayed or neutered had a higher risk of cancer, bone and joint problems, and behavior problems. I found that interesting and particularly pretty impactful for dogs. So together with a professional statistician, I analyzed their data in more detail. And the results showed that regardless of the age at which the dog was spayed or neutered, dogs that underwent those procedures had significantly higher odds of developing important malignancies, including hemangiosarcoma, lymphoma, mast cell cancers, and other cancers. In fact, a much higher percentage of spayed female dogs developed fatal cancers than intact dogs that developed mammary cancer. In addition, spayed or neutered dogs developed cancer at a much younger age, which is pretty significant. Further, spayed or neutered dogs developed more behavior problems also at a significantly younger age. That report was published in JAVMA in 2014. And after its, after its publication, I kind of expected to see a whole lot of letters to the editor, but there were none. To my surprise, that paper seems to have gone unnoticed. Now around that time and in the years since, a number of studies have been published on the same topic, notably by the Hearts at the University of California, Davis, but also by others. And these reports show that an increased prevalence of bone and joint disorders, cancer, and other health and behavior issues occur in golden retrievers, Labrador retrievers, German shepherd dogs, and other breeds. So the issue doesn't seem to be particularly exclusive to Vigilas. And there are published studies showing an increased prevalence of autoimmune disorders, allergies, hypothyroidism, and adverse reactions to vaccines that are in dogs that are gonadectomized. So if you're, in if you're interested in a summary of these publications, you can find them on my website at www.caninesports.com. Just look in the main menu under useful information or useful info, then zinc articles. The title is Gonadectomy, Rethinking Long-Held Beliefs. Now it should be recognized that most, although not all, of these studies are retrospective. And so they do come with the inherent biases of retrospective studies. Of course, my feeling is that's not a reason to ignore them, but rather to take the data presented therein with caution. Over the past decade, however, the data on potential negative effects of spay and neuter have been accumulating, and I believe that they should not be ignored. There was a fascinating study published in 2007 that showed 30 times higher levels of luteinizing hormone in the blood of dogs that were spayed or neutered, likely because there were no gonads present to complete the negative feedback loop and stop the production of LH. This study hinted at a possible reason for the increased prevalence of cancer. Receptors for LH are present not just in the gonads, but on most cells in the body. And when LH binds to them, it sets up a pro-inflammatory signaling cascade that, among other things, stimulates cell division. Now, in addition, I was particularly concerned about the behavioral data that was a component of many of these studies. It seemed to correlate with an increase in behavior problems that I see almost daily in dogs in my clinic and in training classes. And in my experience, one reason that many veterinarians encourage clients to spay or neuter their dogs is because removal of the gonads was thought to improve behavior. And yet, most of the dogs in which I was observing problematic behavior were spayed or neutered. 
So this was a bit of a conundrum to me. I therefore initiated a study along with a canine behaviorist colleague, Parveen Farhoudi, and Dr. James Serpel, that asked the question whether spaying or neutering dogs affected behavior. Now we used Dr. Serpel's validated sea bark assessment and asked whether there was any difference in aggression in dogs that were spayed or neutered at various ages. We chose aggression because this is the most egregious canine behavior in terms of living with their people and one that causes many dogs to be euthanized. Our data, which included over 13,000 dogs, were published in 2018 and showed that spaying or neutering did not reduce, reduce uh, canine aggression at all, but in fact increased it by a modest 26% in dogs that were gonadectomized between seven and 12 months of age. You know, with the increasing amount of data showing potential negative effects of gonadectomy, it's important to realize that there are other means of preventing unwanted breeding. For males, it's relatively easy to perform a vasectomy. Now, one possible disadvantage is that vasectomy does not prevent some unwanted behaviors associated with males, such as marking or humping or roaming. But on the other hand, you know, females and neutered males frequently mark and hump as well. Training is an effective solution to these problems and appropriate containment is a solution to roaming. To the best of my knowledge, veterinary schools do not currently teach students how to perform vasectomies. However, the methodology has been described and any veterinarian can learn the technique because I have a video of how to do it and any veterinarian can obtain that from me by emailing me at cz at caninesports.com with canines spelled out in full. Now in females, the issues are more complex because having a bitch in heat is inconvenient and leaving the uterus intact substantially increases the risk of pyometra, which is serious and potentially fatal. One solution is to perform a hysterectomy, removal of the uterus, leaving the ovaries intact. As yet, however, the long-term effects of this technique on female dogs have not been systematically studied. Anecdotally, we know that most hysterectomized dogs continue to ovulate and have mild heat cycles. During this time, they're attractive to intact males and they may show behavioral changes, vulvar swelling, and in some cases, a very minor discharge. Further, dogs that have this surgery will have intact ovaries, so veterinarians would need to establish an effective monitoring system for early detection of mammary cancer in intact bitches. After all, that's what we do for women. So I think it's possible to do that. In addition, there's the possibility of the dog developing a stump pyometra if small amounts of uterine tissue are left behind during the hysterectomy. This potential issue can be prevented, however, by careful re removal of the entire uterus. So in this context, I think it's also important for us to consider the outstanding studies by David Waters showing significantly increased longevity in bitches that retain their ovarian hormones. Those are studies that are really worth looking up. Now for males with retained testicles, there's a logical solution based on fact. A large prospective study showed that the incidence of testicular cancer in cryptorchid dogs was 12.7 per 1,000 dog years at risk. In other words, if 1,000, if 100 dogs with retained testicles live to be about 10 years old, approximately 13 of them will develop cancer in the retained testicle. The average age at which tumors develop in an undescended testis is 8.7 years. These tumors are commonly benign, as we know, although they can grow pretty large. Based on this study, I recommend that dogs with retained testicles undergo abdominal ultrasound examination every two years to determine whether a tumor is developing in the retained testicle or testicles. And if that's detected, which will happen in a small minority of dogs, it can be removed at that time. In addition, dogs with just one undescended testicle should undergo a vasectomy on that spermatic cord. This solution allows the dog to have the benefit of its sex hormones but prevents passing this likely genetic condition on to offspring. I'd like to close by recommending a short book that I've read four times, and I almost never read a book more than once. It's called How Doctors Think by Jerome Groupman. This book provides an abundance of practical information for doctors, including veterinarians, and patients, which would include all of us. 
Using excellent published examples and his own personal experience as a physician, Dr. Groupman talks about the kinds of cognitive errors that we all make. One important cognitive error happens when, upon finding a solution to a problem, in this case, removal of the gonads to solve the pet over overpopulation problem, we no longer look further into the question. And this is what I believe has happened with the question of spaying and neutering dogs. As veterinarians, we have the responsibility for the health of the dogs in our care. It's important for us to continually read and evaluate new studies to ensure that we're taking the best care of our clients' dogs and frankly, even our own canine companions. Let me give you an example here. Most children in the decades after World War II had their tonsils removed just because they suffered a sore throat. Today, this procedure is performed much less commonly because numerous studies have shown that removal of this immune organ imposes both short-term and long-term risks on the patient, and it actually provided questionable benefits. Likewise, in consideration of the evidence presented here, it's apparent that removal of the gonads can present significant risks, at least to some dogs. This is particularly true given that the procedure is not actually required to prevent procreation, which is the predominant reason for which gonadectomy is considered. So therefore, before performing gonadectomy, gonadectomy, I think it's important that we assess each dog, its individual living situation, weighing the risks and the benefits of removal of the gonads. It's also essential and in fact ethical that we discuss with our clients the pros and cons of the procedure and their alternatives. You know, there's no single solution that fits every dog. We want to practice individualized veterinary medicine. And certainly we would be remiss in our duties to not consider all of those options and choose the best one for each dog in its individual situation.